Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Zhu. I'm Dr. Isabel. Our knowledgeable expert today is Brian Bradley. He's an international speaker on the topics of improving posture, minimizing pain, and enhancing performance. Brian has trained some of the top athletes in professional sports and Tony Robbins. He is on a mission to help millions of people learn how to live healthier, pain-free lives and achieve complete fitness. Welcome, Brian. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Brian Bradley. We'll get you all the information to get a hold of me uh, to discuss later. But I'm from the Egoscu Method, E G O S C U E. I've been with uh, Pete Egoscu for about 30 years, and um, we're doing, honestly, what I call God's work as it relates to helping people with chronic pain. So, Stick around because this conversation is going to be amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, one of my clients, we talk about crawling. We talk about the primal movement of crawling. So a long time ago, I gave my kid the unfair advantage. So somebody showed me this from a Japanese household. Of They built a climbing wall in their house. Mm. Oh. Look at that baby. I... I want to find that family and give them the biggest hug and just be like, look, thank you. Because what you've done is you've, you've taken a primal movement of allow the baby to be curious, allow the baby to fall a little bit, allow the baby to grip, allow the baby to, but if you skip the primal movement of crawling, then I believe you're in trouble for the rest of your life as it relates to uh, right, left side of the body, opposite arm, opposite leg moving, maybe emotionally. And I know just enough to be dangerous in this kind of stuff. So when you look at this picture of my son, and that's his back facing you, that's the age of 14, that's an elite level soccer team. Look at his build compared to them, and that's without any weightlifting. Wow. Because I took him to the gym, meaning I took him to the park outside. And I let him swing, slide down poles, go down the sliding board, climb back up the sliding board, jump from five feet up, land in the sand. Dad, can we go home? And I say, hey, buddy, do you want to go home? No. Can we stay longer? I'm like, stay as long as you want. Because A, it integrated him with every race of child around him, which was important. And B, how to conflict resolve with stuff that was going on. And C, how to physically engage his environment. And this video I'm going to show you is him running his first 200 meter run. He's in the back in the white shirt. He had never run track before. <laughs> it's only 200 meters and he wins by 45 meters. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Look at him. Wow. Yeah. And give a run. It's like cheating. Yes. But it is cheating because every other kid was still in such a massive gang, you know, gangly kind of firstborn giraffe kind of all over the place. And all I did was, we're going to get you so strong in, in a 360 environment that's fun because it's childlike play. And it brought everything right in like a, the bottom of a tornado is so perfect. The top is where the mess is. Mm -hmm. But he was down here. Everybody else was up here. That's and now he plays college soccer and it's the same kind of thing as coaches are look we're you're good at soccer but you're great at being an athlete because the body can support his talent so i only tell you this yes i'm a proud father um i'm not even sure he's my kid because he's so good at sports and i wasn't very good in sports so maybe he's somebody's kid but i raised him um that's a joke by the way and uh but i will tell you i if your body is deviating from that design right there, which, which is perfection, can you get there? You know, maybe. But how about don't be focused on the perfection, just be focused on the road to it mm -hmm. and how far you can get up the road. Okay. And my analogy and you being in the dental world before is amazing because I tell people all the time, does it make sense for you to go to the dentist and have a root canal done and a deep, deep, deep cleaning and all your caries filled? And no, no, yeah, I love that. And I said, great. Now you're going to spend the next six months and not brush and floss your teeth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
And they're like, no, you should always brush and floss. Then why aren't you brushing and flossing your joints by getting your body to align perfectly as well as possible, centrate those joints the way they're supposed to rather than being crooked, and then reap benefits at a level where you're all familiar with mixed martial arts, where you have one of the best fighters in the world, two different postures, two different fights, two different outcomes. That's the same guy in two fights. Mm -hmm. And he, in the green, he won in 44 seconds. And in the red, he got crushed. Mm -hmm. Because something went wrong in the training. Something went wrong up here too. Mm -hmm. So, or in his, I'll say it's more here. But I will tell you, he was emotionally intelligent enough to listen to Tony Robbins about why are you fighting and pushing your way through life let it come to you and control it if you can control it. And then the physical response that Brian and Nagoski were going to give you is the basis for all the foundation. So. That's brilliant because that's exactly right. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people do. They're just fighting their emotions instead of, okay, acknowledge them. It's energy. You cannot contain energy. You need to let it go and release it. Can you imagine what it would be like, and you guys are probably all over the world with your stuff, but in the United States especially, I only know that one very well. I have, a, I have probably five or six friends who grew up and at a very young age, they knew they were lesbian or gay homosexual male. But can you imagine, I'm 53 years old, 45 years ago, growing up like that in a small town and people going, you know, and Imagine trying to transition that emotionally your whole life, trying to fight it, trying to stop it. When you knew it wasn't instinctively right to stop it, it was just how you were born and what you're, it's not a choice like you think I'm gonna eat a chocolate bar or a caramel apple. I mean, it's, it's what happens to people. And maybe I, th I think tonight I'm gonna have a chocolate bar and a caramel apple now that I just reminded myself, but I'm just kidding. The, um, <laughs> you brush your teeth. <laughs> yeah, make sure you brush your teeth. Yes. Well, I have this, I had this one lady who went through this as a client of ours, she was seven visits in and she was no better. Mm. And she came in, spiked up hair, very masculine, sleeves, big arms. I knew right away that she had a partner, not a husband, you know, that kind of stuff. And they said, well, Brian, can you help Stephanie out? She has this, this, this. And I said, you've already given her seven bouts of our exercise and she's no better. What do you think I'm going to do? Give her the magic exercise? And they're like, well, and I said, bring her to my office. Let me talk to her. And they're like, no, no, no. We don't need your psycho babble, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I want to find out where she is emotionally. Just let me ask her one question. Just one question? Just one question. But you know as well as I do, you ask the right question. Here it comes. So she comes in and she sits back like this. I sit back like this and put my feet up on the table. Like I'm in, I'm in a Jimmy Buffett concert relaxing. But her symptoms are so real, she wants someone serious. And I went the opposite. And I said to her, I only have one question for you. And remember, this does not come from judgment. I am not qualified to judge anybody. What does your partner think of your chronic pain? And I waited. And she's like, looking around for, is this because I just found her out, right? Oh, he knows. Meanwhile, she lived in South Carolina or North Carolina, moved to California 3,500 miles away, trying to escape it. But wherever you go, there you are. So all this stuff followed her. And I said, remember, no judgment. And she was sitting like this. And she finally went, dropped her arms, arms uncrossed, sat back, almost relaxed and relieved and said, Francesca's amazing. I've never known love like this before. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Well, we weren't done. Because then I said this, what do your parents think about your relationship? And then she went to, honestly, she was like this. My dad passed away. He never got to find out. I said, well, here's a box of tissues. You might as well have a conversation with him because he's watching right now and he's protecting you. I'm giving her this idea that she's, which I knew she was protected with me. She's safe. 
And then I said, what about your mother? And she sat up and she's upset again. And she goes, oh, my mom has been, she dropped two swear words that I was like, okay. And I said, let me guess, your mom still lives back East. And she goes, yeah, I'm not going back there to visit her. And I said, well, you like being controlled because you're a woman, right? And she's like, what? And I said, well, I know that's not true, but why are you giving someone 3,500 miles away control of your emotions? I didn't even mention her name. I just said, your mother, and you got all hyped up again. And you expect my therapist to try to get you out of pain when you're judging yourself on a daily basis. So finally, she says to me, after I said this, I said, imagine you and your partner together, you're making dinner and you go up and you give her a kiss. And then you hear in your little ear, your mother going, you shouldn't be kissing a girl. And she goes, Brian, that's exactly like what I think. I, I'm kind of stuck. And she sat back. She looked like she was just through a three mile run. She's exhausted. I was having a blast because she was making progress. Yeah. And she said to me, I'm going to tell you something that I, I just figured out. And I said, what's that? I'm homophobic. And I said, well, how's that working for you? Because you're the homo. <laughs> Yes. And so I was trying to break her state again. Again, no judgment. And she said, I get it. And I said, okay, well, then you're going to do me some homework this week. I'm not going to give you any new exercises. It's not the exercises. The exercises are fine what you have. We've got to open you up to a point where your body can absorb what somebody else is giving you as it relates to that. But you're so closed down that you can't. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to happen... You're going to have to go home and finally, for the first time in your life, show Francesca a love like she's never known before because you've been giving her 25, 30 percent. And that's just not fair. Mm -hmm. She said, deal. And I said, then I might have you call your mother. And she goes, not going to happen. <laughs> so she went home, came back two weeks later. She was all ripped up on her arm because she flipped over her mountain bike on a on a bike wreck and I walked up and gave her a high five and said, what'd you do? That looks awesome. Like your injury is an opportunity. Let's talk about it. And she said, I'm great. My back feels great. I've never felt this good in my life. I said, how's it going, Francesca? She goes, amazing. How's it going with your mother? I told you I'm not calling her. I said, yet. <laughs> when you forgive yourself for all the judgment that you've been giving yourself, you see what's happening with the exercises. Your body's able to absorb when you don't believe you're broken. Broken can't be fixed in, in a lot of people's eyes, but bent can be slightly bent back. And physically bent always has an emotional bent to it. Yes. And Peter Goscu actually wrote a book on this. And his discussion is, yeah, a person who comes in rotated, you can bet 10 to 1. My first question isn't about your pain. It's about what are you trying to rotate and protect yourself from? Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing you know, dichotomy that people play with themselves. And then they come to us and expect my therapist to, to work miracles. But I'd say 50 to 60% of this is how do you feel about your injury? And then wait, I don't care if it's uncomfortable silence, wait for the answer and see what you get. Yes. It's beautiful because it is exactly yes. what we talk about. 90% of what happens to us in symptoms, diseases, conditions, it's originated in the emotions, trapped emotions that we are not able to heal. And something that with that patient, for example, if she doesn't want to talk to her mom, she can talk to the energy of the mom. So as if the mother was there and it helps immensely. Amazing. That is amazing. Like, I'm, where were you 10 years ago when this happened? Because you're right, that would be one of those things. If she was here and you were forced just to ask her one question, what would it be? You know, and you really know what the problem is. Mm -hmm. The mother, it, she was born Baptist and raised Baptist in the Deep South, and the mother feels guilty about something she did to raise a lesbian daughter. It has to be her fault. Mm -hmm. I've never had a, I've never had a scoliosis customer, client, who was brought in by the father. They're always brought in by the mother. Why? Because a mother has a nine month head start on loving that child. Yes. I love my kid, but my wife loves my kid. 
Like, not that he can't do anything wrong, but my mom, my wife would kill for that. Whereas I would probably tell him, grab him by the scruff of the neck and go, what are you doing? You know, but she's in mother bear mode. Look at this picture of this scoliosis customer at the age of like 13 and the decision she made after tears, of course, at the table, because I like to make people cry, apparently. Um, but look at her difference from left to right. Oh, wow. In a two week time period. Two weeks. Seriously. Wow. It's but this young girl, she made the decision. So what was the emotion trap behind? Do you think it was emotional there or is it more posture? Well, there's definitely the posture, but the emotion is I'm going into middle school. I'm the only one in a back brace. I'm the weirdo. Mm -hmm. So I just made it okay. I literally said to her, hey, weirdo, how you doing? <laughs> Call it out. What's the elephant in the room? You have to know your audience. I understand that. But I try to make it fun. And I tell her, by the time I'm done with you, I promise you, you're going to want to look into this type of work or you're going to go to medical school because you're going to know that your experience now is an opportunity for you at the age of 13 to be taking care of your body, mind, and spirit where all of your other friends are lost on some other planet. Right. And, the cell phones, and all these cell phones are ruining them. And then eventually you start judging yourself. Then you have an eating disorder and then you have this and you have chronic pain. Then you're in a marriage. You end up in a divorce a year later because you married the wrong guy and he was so mean to you. Meanwhile, you're the problem. I love right? it. So all of this, I want to show you an exciting person. This is Masa from my Tokyo clinic. I just have to put this out. That's a 90 minute change from start to finish. Wow, <laughs> 90 minutes. Wow. 90 minutes, 78 years young. Midori will know who Masa is. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I, this was a perfect thing about how people learn. They either learn, um, you know, uh, through their visual, through their auditory, or through their kinesthetic, you know, and I'm sure there's 10,000 other ways, but let's just make it easy, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. And I showed her these pictures and I'm like, Masa, amazing. And she's like, no, before that, she said, I feel the same because I ask a dumb question. How do you feel? And she's like, the same in Japanese. And the person says, she says she feels the same. And I'm like, I'm sorry. She came in looking like this. She mm -hmm. now looks like this. How can she feel the same? <laughs> so I showed her the pictures. Mm -hmm. And her granddaughter was her therapist. Mm -hmm. So in Masa's mind, if I feel the same, Brian's disappointed. Mm. I've dishonored my granddaughter. Yes, that's the cultural things right there. <laughs> right? So I played on that. I'm like this. How dare you dishonor your granddaughter? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I showed her this picture and she starts crying. You know what she said? I feel so much better. Mm. Because she's, if you have a pain of an eight, nine, or 10, to get that pain to be a two or three, we as practitioners would say amazing six or seven point change. To the person in pain, it's not gone. Mm -hmm. right. I'm scared it's going to come back. So it's the same. Mm -hmm. So I'm done asking, how do you feel? My therapists are done asking, how do you feel? They ask better questions. What is different about the way you're standing now? Mm -hmm. What do you feel has changed? So think about people that say, yeah, I'd really like to go out and buy a, um, I think I need an ergonomic chair. I think I need to buy a $3,000 or $7,000 ergonomic chair. And don't get me wrong, there's amazing chairs out there. Mm -hmm. But if, you're, if your body is shaped like this, and you put that body in a $3,000 chair with a $2 butt like he has, <laughs> to the butt. <laughs> this is him. 12 minutes of exercise later. Oh, wow. Look at, oh, oh, look at the gosh. shoulders. Look at well, his... thank God he had a tattoo because nobody believes it's the same guy. Right. Yes. Wow. That's a 58-year-old Ironman triathlete. Oh, wow. Who's now able to discover his personal best because his body's no longer in the way. It's just oh, incredible, really. This approach, just you know, awareness, the awakening. 
to the body. Oh. That's amazing. amazing. Look, I got lucky 30 years ago this year, ran into Peter Goscu, and my life has never been the same. Tony Robbins was one of my first clients I ever worked on. I got, I didn't even know who he was. He was sitting there doing his power move and all this other stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? The good that that guy's doing around the world right now is just, it's unmatched. Mm -hmm. It's unmatched. So being a part of his group of people that help him to keep that juggernaut going, mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of doing it for three decades and we're going to keep going. So many patients, they're trying prescription over prescription because they have pain, they have discomfort surgeries, hip replacements, knee replacements, those things can be prevented. Exactly. If can align the body before the pain comes, before the discomfort, this is what we want. We want people to become aware that they, their body is so wise and we can heal our body if we have the right tools to do it. And that's exactly right. And, and, once a person realizes they're not broken, it breaks the hold that the brain and the emotions have on it. And that is critical for us to be able to do that. Absolutely. So have you noticed like a specific postures affecting the TMJ or what can you do for people that are struggling with TMJ problems? In our opinion, TMJ is, I won't say 100% because you dentists will freak out. Um, I will say that it's 95% structural misalignment causing the TMJ to be occluded, working incongruently, just like your, why is it so hard to believe in the dental world that we know that an elbow could work incongruently, we know that a knee might be out of alignment, why couldn't the TMJ be out of alignment? Oh, absolutely. But a lot of people believe that, but they put an an orthotic in there to change it externally versus what if it was that triathlon guy that has no butt and his back's rounded like this and he's slightly rotated. Like you could have TMJ symptoms because you're going, you haven't once touched your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. You've gone over here. You didn't go, it's on both sides. You said it's one side and my head, my head cocks over one direction. Yes. Yes. So start thinking of, imbalances create imbalanced pain symptoms mm -hmm. or imbalanced performance issues. Why my baseball players don't get hurt. Why other baseball players throw their arm out because they're throwing the ball with the arm. Mm. So what would be a, a, a recommendation that you would give people that are starting to have problems with the TMJ? Just watch their posture, watch. No, very simple, very simple. Ask them to go to a mirror, look at their shoulder level and their head in the mirror. Just look from the breast up and say, what do you see? Okay, I see that my head's like this, or I don't know. Okay, open up your mouth. How many fingers can you get in? Can you get the obligatory three fingers in your mouth? All right, and they go, no, I can only get two, or I can get one. Great, I want you to stand pigeon-toed, hands behind your head for one minute. Oh, gosh, okay. Oh, come out of it. Oh, I'm so fatigued. Okay, good. Open up your mouth. And they can finally get, and that's speaking from experience watching people. Mm -hmm. They go from one to three. Did we fix the TMJ? No, I don't have an interest in fixing the TMJ. That's your world. My job is to reposition the spine from the hips out so that the dentist can really work on what's happening up here versus treating symptoms the whole time. That, that's perfect. That is yes. the integration, the integration, you know, to really find the root where the, you know, the mechanic of the root is issues. So then the expert can work on it, but we got to really find the fundamental problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's correct. And I will tell you, like the, here's the pain-free book. We have that on every major bookstore, amazon.com. If people have questions, they can hit me up. You saw my Instagram. Uh, it's under the Brian Bradley, or you can go to at Egoscue Method. And we always answer our own direct messages from people. So when somebody says to me, hey, I have this, I say to them, they think they're bothering me. They're not. Because it's all it is is a beginning of a conversation that I eventually am going to get paid on something, mm -hmm. right? And whether it's paid by them financially, but more importantly, paid by them saying, I ran into this company online. 
you have got to go get this book. So we create these zealots who feed the world with this. And if you're really into helping people, it's not about the money. So I have a $15 option. I have a free option if you go to the library, right? Mm -hmm. Or I have a digital option, or I have a Zoom option, or I have an in-clinic option. So there's a plethora of ways people can get help. But start asking questions first. Why is my body doing this? Not woe is me, why is my body doing this? Not why is life happening to me? How about life's happening for me? Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity like that scoliosis girl I showed you. Yeah, brilliant. Yes. Wow. Any recommendations for people so that they're starting to become aware? So follow your exercises and your recommendations. What else can they be doing more of so they don't to prevent problems? So let's say somebody doesn't have any problems. How can they prevent them? Okay, number one. There are a couple books that I think are essential if people are into reading books. Number one, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Oh, yes. I Go know. get it. Tony Robbins turned me on to that years ago, and I read it every year because I'm in a different place every year, and I learn something new every year. Number two, The Four Agreements. Oh, yes. Mm. Great book. Number three, why we get sick. This talks about insulin resistance oh. as the basis for all metabolic disorder. Very interesting concept that dementia, heart disease, high blood pressure, cholesterol, this, erectile dysfunction, all that stuff, too many ways for the body to keep eating sugar and the insulin is not being produced to be able to handle it. You're resistant to it. Yes. And then the Breathe book. Oh, yes. Great book. So I know that's a lot of reading. Okay, don't read it. Just If anything, just read Man's Search for Meaning because that'll give you an opportunity to say, Viktor Frankl in the Auschwitz camp said, basically, what's my life trying to teach me? Hmm. I'm focused on the goal of seeing my family again, so he lived, whereas everybody else around him who didn't have these goals and gave up, they died. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. It is. Yes. It is a mindset. Yes. Because we all create a personal reality, right? So basically, it's the only reality that exists within yourself. So how can I create the reality that besides what happened to you? Because the people have this all the stories. Well, if you have the story, you're going to shift the story. You're going to change the you know, lens. Well, remember the story that we started out with, with Stephanie and Francesca that I had 10, 15 years ago. Her reality was my whole life I've been beat up for my choice. So I'm just going to move away and say, forget you. No, you didn't change anything. You just changed locations. Mm -hmm. And it affected my therapist to where you were making it impossible for us to get you well because you didn't deserve it. You've been told your whole life you didn't deserve this. So why would I be able to help you? Quit wasting my time. Forget your money. I'll give it back. Don't waste my time unless you say to yourself, I'm worthy. I'm worth it. Yes. Peter Goscu gave a client one of these times. It's, this was amazing. He had her stand in front of a mirror at home. He said, I want you to go home and do this. You're going to strip down completely naked. Now, Doc, Isabel, think about this, females especially. You're going to strip down completely naked and stand in front of a mirror and look at your entire body. What do the magazines tell you? You need to eat less and work out more and always judge yourself, but be nice to yourself. And they try to be nice about it, but it's complete bullshit, right? But when a female looks at herself and guy, I didn't say guys yet because guys won't do this because they're afraid to, right? <laughs> Women will do it because they'll be like, I want to see what happens. Well, you put a 250 pound woman in front of a mirror and ask her this question to herself. Are you going to be able to ask this question? Are you going to be able to make this statement? Look at body parts, look it up and down, and then look at yourself in the eyes in the mirror and say, I approve. Oh. I approve. And meanwhile, I did this with the lady and I said to her, um, I said, so let me guess, the first time you said it, I approve. A little bird in your ear went, no, no, you don't. I approve. No, I hate myself. I approve. I'm fat. I approve. People judge me. And she goes, yeah, I was, all I heard were negatives. She said, but after about seven days, she goes, it stopped. 
And if you can just make that incantation where you look at your body and say, I approve, I believe that thoughts are cellular. So instantly when you break down the wall and say, I really do approve, your cells react to it. And I would bet your body starts to break down metabolically a little differently. Yes, absolutely. I have zero proof of this and I'm not going to prove anything and I don't care. If you need the proof, you're listening to the wrong guy. <laughs> have to prove this to yourself get rid of self-judgment and half of what we do as a business is getting people out of their way mentally and emotionally that is yes well said yes that have to start from there first right no matter how much you try to move the body to even exercise and stuff here it says no 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 <laughs> resisting all the time that's exactly right 100 percent. oh self-love and acceptance and mm -hmm. approval of yourself and your yeah. body and how you are. You could say very easily, wow, I don't know if I like the way I look. Okay, that's fine. Just don't judge it. And when those judgments come up, you could literally say this to yourself. Peter Goskew again, telling me this is what he does. No, thank you for the gift. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Even when somebody hands you a pile of poop, if they wrapped it in birthday wrapping, you'd still be excited to open it because it's a gift. So when you label something crappy a gift, it no longer has control over you. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So I hope this was helpful. Yes. Um, people can get a hold of me. They can DM me, and you guys can put, push into our website. They can get a hold of me, ask questions. Um, I do try to answer everybody's DMs and Q&As on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you're the you. person with the passion for the heart. Just like Tony, I can see that just... Tony's energy comes out. <laughs> yes, yes. I've been lucky to be, honestly, I've been lucky to be surrounded by, I don't know what I did in my past lives, but I'm thanking my ancestors now because somebody blessed me to be able to be around the right people. That's for sure. That is true. You're yes. attracting it. Your energy is attracting the right people to you. Yes. yes. Yeah, like you two. Thank you. Thank you.